Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all who gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one to whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had before you, that the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave to me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave me I have given to them, and they accepted them and truly understand that I came from you. And they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones that you have given me. Because they are yours. And everything of mine is yours. And everything of yours is mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world. But they are in the world. While I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. That's better. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you have sent, Jesus Christ. Knowing God. Eternal life is to know God. And to understand this passage and understand what St. John and Jesus are getting at, we have to understand the context of the verb to know. When Jesus says eternal life is to know the Father, it means much more than a casual knowledge. It's more than knowing what the baseball scores are tonight. He's not speaking of a casual knowledge. He also doesn't mean knowledge in an academic sense. Jesus doesn't mean knowing about the Father. Now, this is significant because you have heard me say from this pulpit over and over again that we have to read the Bible since that is in Scripture that God has chosen to reveal himself to us. It's through Scripture that we come to know the Father, and that's true. We do need to read scripture if we're to know the Father. But that's not all. That knowledge does not come automatically from reading scripture. Because people can read scripture for years and still not know the Father. One example I can think of is Joseph Campbell. When I was an undergraduate studying literature, Joseph Campbell, a former Catholic, was the leading world's expert in mythology. This man had studied every book of the Bible intensely, but despite that, He had no knowledge of the Father. He saw the Bible as nothing more than a book of myths, telling the story of of people and attempting to explain the unexplainable. So Campbell puts the Bible on the same level as Homer's Odyssey, or the myths of the Norsemen, or the ancient Egyptians, or the Incas of South America. This is how Joseph Campbell explains Marian devotion. As Christianity spread from Israel to the pagan world, the pagan converts of the faith didn't want to part with their worship of the female goddess. So around the second century, Christianity provided a female deity for them to worship in Mary, the mother of Jesus. But to maintain the masculine domination of the religion, they made her a virgin and made her completely submissive to men. Now that's a nice little theory, Joe, but it has one great big hole in it. We now have archaeological proof supporting the origins of Marian devotion in Jerusalem with the Jewish converts to the faith in the first century. Obliterates the goddess theory. The man didn't know the father. Another example. I went to seminary in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and I was surrounded by Bible Christians. And yet many of these Bible Christians, and sad to say some Catholics in the area too, were also members of the local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. The Klan was having a rally in town on Sunday afternoon, and a number of us from the seminary went to protest it. Some of them were holding their Bibles in their white Klan outfits. Some of them had been to the seminary chapel only earlier that morning to go to Mass. And yet they couldn't understand what we were so upset about. 
They were like, what's the problem? You're white, you're Christian. And no matter how much we argued, we couldn't make them understand that the philosophy of the Klan totally betrays everything that Jesus stood for. Knowing the Bible doesn't necessarily mean knowing the Father. So what does Jesus mean when he says that eternal life is to know the only true God? The knowledge that Jesus is speaking of is an intimate knowledge. When the Archangel Gabriel appears to Mary and tells her that she's to bring the Christ into the world, Mary responds, but how can this be since I have not known man? She was saying, how can this be since I'm a virgin? Since antiquity, having sexual relations with a person was described as having knowledge of them. Because there is nothing more personal or intimate than our sexuality. The scriptures understand sexuality as a total and complete giving of oneself to the other. That is the knowledge that Jesus is speaking about. The knowledge is between a husband and a wife. That's the intimacy with God that we're called to. Now, I know that I have battered the theme of prayer half to death in my six years here. And I know that I told you that the way to know God is through prayer and scripture reading. But how we pray makes all the difference. Our prayers shouldn't be just words. And our prayer should not be just asking God for stuff. Prayer is a total self-giving, a surrendering of ourselves to the will of God. And it doesn't take much, and it doesn't have to be long. You can surrender to God while driving to work. Abba, Father, I take my day and make it yours. Make me your own today, Father. Lord, I surrender to your will. I reconsecrate myself to God every time I say Mass. Every time I elevate the host during Mass, my prayer is that silent prayer, as you see me hesitating with the, with the host up in the air, is, Lord, make me every bit the priest you want me to be, make me every bit the pastor they need me to be, and give me the grace for everything in between. That's my daily surrender. And I need to do that. I need to surrender to the Lord every day, because if I don't, my ego is going to get in the way of his plan. And all of you can do the same thing. Lord, make me every bit the husband or the wife you want me to be today. Make me every bit the son or the daughter, the brother, the sister, the friend you want me to be today. Make me every bit the Christian you want me to be today. What about scripture? When we read scripture, do we see it as, oh, wasn't it neat what God did 2,000 years ago? Or do we see it as God speaking directly to us in the here and now? Because God is. God does. God speaks to us constantly. This is why priests can preach on the same readings year after year. When I was in seminary, that was the thing that scared me the most. I'm like, how am I going to preach on these same readings month after month, year after year, and not repeat myself? The word of God doesn't stagnate. And it hasn't for me in 20 years. God knows each one of us intimately better than we know ourselves. And God wants us to intimately know him too. Because it's in this knowledge that brings us eternal life. May we always seek to know the only true God in him whom he has sent, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And blessed be God forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.